I recently made a video showing you how to do various things with lock sound decoders. One of the things that I showed you were how to fit a stay alive, and I was surprised how many people found it useful. So I thought I'd just do another video, um, some of it will be repeated with the lock sound, but I'll also mention the other decoder types as well, just so you understand how to fit stay alives to all of them. And uh, I'll make sure that I put the instructions in with the settings as well that need to be changed. So hopefully this is another video that people find useful. Um, let me know if there's anything similar that you want me to make videos of in the future, because um, I'm going to try and make more videos moving forwards. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Hornby HM7000 decoders. These are arguably the easiest one to do because it's got a plug that you just plug into the decoder. So Hornby do make a stay alive, um, but they very rarely make enough, so they're constantly out of stock. So AE models have been really good and they've come up with two different style lives in different sizes which have the same plug. So if I do a bigger one, which is probably the one that gets used sort of in more of the installs that I've done. Um, and then there's a smaller one, which I think they originally said it was for TT gauge, but I've used it in double O gauge locos with no issues either. Um, so this one's good if you're more limited for space. I'll show you this one and I'll show you how easy it is to plug into the decoder. So they do these in single or triple packs as well. Um, saves you a little bit of money. It's like getting one half price pretty much. I think it works out if you buy the triple pack. So it's like paying for two and a half instead of paying the individual price three times. So the good thing with this one as well is that the capacitors are on wires so you might have to like, I don't know, fit them either side of a speaker or fit them around a, a bogey or something and you can do that because they're already separated. On the Hornby decoder you've got two sockets. You've got one which is smaller and that's for the speaker Then you've got the wider one so it plugs in that way, so in other words, the, uh, if you're holding it with the decoder wires towards you, the blue wire is closest to you, um, but it'll only fit in one way anyway, if you have to force it you've probably got it the wrong way around, um, but it kind of clicks into place gently um, and it's a nice secure connection, and it's as easy as that with the Hornby ones. There's no settings to change or anything. Um, that's it, that, that stay alive will work now. These AE models ones with the two wires can also be used with Hornby TTS. Hornby TTS doesn't officially support stay alives, but I've got a diagram showing where you can connect the stay alive to. It's reasonably big solder pads, so it's not too hard for most people to do. Um, so you can fit them to them if you want. If you're doing that, you need to use CV29 to disable DC running. Um, otherwise, it can run away as soon as it goes onto the stay alive power because it thinks it's on DC track. Not sure exactly how that works, but if you look in your instructions for the TTS decoder, it should tell you how to set CV29 to remove DC running. It's one of them where you have to sort of calculate it based on what you're trying to do. So. Part of CV29 chooses direction, for example, part of it chooses if it runs on DC, part of it chooses if it's a four digit address. So these would be the ones to use and just cut the plug off and solder the wires, like in the diagram which I've put on screen. Next we'll look at lock sound because that's my best selling decoder type. So there's a few different options for stay lives for these. ESU, who make the decoder, have their own. So those are always popular, being the same brand as the decoder, um, but they're about £35. Next it's the Trenomatic um, Stay Alives. So these are made by a Romanian company who make DCC decoders, but their three-wire Stay Alives are perfect for lock sound. Um, I use them all the time. I've used them in hundreds of models and, and sold thousands. Um, the bigger one, with the green capacitor is basically a, well, I, I probably shouldn't say copy, but it, it looks very similar to the ESU um, Stay Alive. Um, they also make a different size, which I, I never understood why ESU didn't 
but this size is the more useful one of the two because it's got a slightly smaller capacity um, but it doesn't really seem to affect the time that it runs for you get a couple of seconds out of it um, depending how quick your loco is going and stuff anyway um, and then it's flat so you can put that in like it'll fit on top of the Craft Fox 7 chassis for example without getting in the way whereas the one with the bigger capacitor you usually have to sit it in like a speaker well or something and if you fit in sound that's a bit of a problem potentially because your speaker's going to be there so these are three wires as well so I've mentioned it before but the middle wire is like a bypass so that's the white one so when you're programming with a lock programmer or with something like JMRI on a computer that'll let you program it with the decoder still connected. It is possible to use a two-wire stay alive with a lock sound decoder as well. But if you're ever reprogramming it with a lock programmer or a computer program, you'd have to disconnect it. So I tend to avoid it if I can. Um, the only exception being that sometimes the really small um, AE models stay alive, which I used on here, is the only thing that'll fit in a model because that's the smallest stay alive I've got. So I will sometimes use that if there's no other option. But if you can, always try and use a, a three wire with ESU. It'll just make your life easier. And it'll make my life easier if you ever send a model for a reblow or anything. Because I only filmed it yesterday, I'm gonna just reuse the old clips of me soldering the wires onto the decoder. But if you have a watch of this, you'll be able to see how I fit the stay alive to the decoder and where the three wires go. Just take note that it's different on a micro to a standard size decoder. On a standard decoder, the red wire is the outer wire and on a micro, the red wire is the inner wire. I'm also going to put some instructions on the screen. These are actually off the Trainomatic website, but it applies to whichever stay alive you're using with the lock sound. But you need to enable the power pack control, and that's basically to tell it that the middle wire, the white one, is a power pack, and you're not using that solder pad as a function or anything. Um, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, and you also need to set the stay alive timer. You can set it up to 255, which is supposed to give you 8 seconds from memory. But in reality, you're probably going to get a couple of seconds. But that's pretty much all you should need from a stay alive. It's only really to give you sort of power as it crosses points or dirty track and stuff. Finally, I'll give Zimo a mention, but I'm not much of a Zimo expert whatsoever. So when it comes to stay alives, I don't know too much. But what I do know from previous experience is that you can use the two wire stay alives um, and that doesn't affect programming so you can leave these connected while you program them. Um, so the AE models ones are perfect but you do have to cut the plug off and solder them onto the decoder a bit like you do with ESU. So I will put a few diagrams on screen and a few examples of ones I've done in the past but it's really something where you're going to have to consult the manual for the demo decoders because I just don't have enough experience of it. One thing I have found in the past is that not every Zimo decoder has pads for a stay alive, so they assume that the model's going to have a solder pad, but not every model will have the solder pads for them. So something like the O3 Shunter by Backman that's a good example where I don't think you can solder the stay alive straight onto the decoder but there are two solder pads under the little circuit board on the next 18 version so you can solder them to that instead so sorry I can't be more help with the Zimo side of it if you are ordering a stay alive from me for Zimo and you're not sure where to connect it I'll try my best to find out or I'll try and find you some diagrams at least which might help narrow down where it connects to your decoder. With the Zimo ones, as far as I know, you don't have to change any settings either, so it's just kind of plug and play. I think you can adjust the time that it runs for though, similar to what you can with the locked on decoders. Because the reason for that is that some people might only want it to run for, say, half a second so that the 
Walker doesn't travel too far if it loses power, so you can change that to suit what you want. Hopefully this has been useful to people. If you found it useful, please like the video and if you want to leave a comment, that would be appreciated too. All of this helps more people find it and it shows me that you've enjoyed the video and it's worth making more of them.